Howdy folks, ever pondered about the way you breathe? Today we'll unravel the five reasons you are breathing the wrong way. Now, you might be thinking, breathing, that's as natural as can be, but hold your horses because there's more to it than meets the eye. Breathing is more than just a reflex. It's a vital function that's intricately connected to your health and well-being. The way you breathe can affect your energy levels, stress response, and even your sleep quality. Now that's something to mull over, isn't it? There are five common mistakes that most of us make without even realizing it. These include breathing too shallow, breathing through your mouth, holding your breath, poor posture, and not exercising enough. Each of these factors can influence your breathing patterns and ultimately your health. Stick around to discover how you might be breathing wrong and how to correct it. Diving straight into the first reason of five reasons you are breathing the wrong way. You're breathing too shallow. Shallow breathing, often referred to as chest breathing, is a common habit for many. When we breathe shallowly, we are essentially using only the upper part of our lungs, depriving the lower part of fresh oxygen. Now this might not seem like a big deal, but it's like only filling your car's gas tank halfway. You're not going to get as far as you could, and the journey might be a bit more stressful. Similarly, your body doesn't function at its best when it's not receiving enough oxygen. It can lead to feelings of stress and anxiety, and can even impact your cardiovascular health. But why do we fall into this habit? Well, a number of factors contribute to shallow breathing. Stress and anxiety are big culprits, causing us to take quick, shallow breaths. Poor posture can also lead to shallow breathing as it restricts the diaphragm and lungs, and let's not forget about the sedentary lifestyle many of us lead, sitting at desks all day, which doesn't encourage good breathing habits. Detecting shallow breathing isn't too difficult. You can do a simple check right now. Place one hand on your chest and the other on your abdomen. Take a deep breath. If your chest moves more than your abdomen, you're likely a shallow breather. But fear not, there are ways to improve your breathing. Practicing deep, diaphragmatic breathing can help retrain your body to breathe more deeply and efficiently. This involves breathing in deeply through your nose, allowing your belly to fill with air, and then exhaling slowly. This kind of intentional, mindful breathing can be a game changer in your overall health. So, let's stop skimming the surface and start taking those deep, nourishing breaths. Remember, deep breaths are key to a healthier you. Hey there, are you enjoying the video so far? We hope you're finding these tips helpful. We've got a lot more where that came from. So, if you haven't done so already, why not hit that subscribe button? Subscribing to our channel means you'll never miss an update. You'll have access to a wealth of health information right at your fingertips. From breathing techniques to exercise tips, we've got you covered. So, go on, hit that subscribe button, and let's continue on our journey to better health together. Now, let's get back to the matter at hand. Breathing. Moving on to the second reason, Moving on to the second reason. You're breathing through your mouth. Now this might sound a bit odd, but did you know that the way you breathe can significantly affect your overall health? Yes, it's true. And one of the most common mistakes people make is breathing through their mouth instead of their nose. You see, our bodies are designed in a very clever way. Your nose is a sophisticated tool that not only filters the air you breathe, but also warms it and humidifies it before it reaches your lungs. It's like a little air conditioning unit right in the middle of your face. But when you breathe through your mouth, you bypass all those benefits. Mouth breathing has been linked to a host of health issues from snoring and sleep apnea to higher risk of respiratory infections. It can also cause dry mouth which can lead to bad breath and dental problems. On the flip side, nose breathing is the way to go. It's been shown to increase oxygen absorption in your lungs, improve your immune system, and even boost your mood. Some studies also suggest that it can enhance cognitive function and memory. How's that for a breath of fresh air? Now, if you're a habitual mouth breather, transitioning to nose breathing might seem a bit challenging at first. But don't worry, it's easier than you think. Here's a tip. Start by consciously closing your mouth whenever you're not talking or eating. Try to do this especially when you're resting or sleeping. You can even use a small piece of tape to gently keep your lips together at night. Remember, practice makes perfect. You might also want to consider doing some breathing exercises to strengthen your diaphragm and improve your nose breathing. Yoga, for instance, is a great way to learn proper breathing techniques. So in a nutshell, your nose is for breathing and your mouth is for eating. It's as simple as that. Keep that mouth shut and let your nose do the work. 
Let's proceed to the third reason in the five reasons you are breathing the wrong way. You're holding your breath. Now this may come as a surprise to some of y'all, but it's more common than you'd think. We often hold our breath as a subconscious reaction to stress, anxiety, or even deep concentration. Picture yourself in a tense situation, maybe you're working on a tight deadline or you're stuck in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. In these moments, our bodies instinctively react and one of those reactions is to hold our breath. This might seem harmless, but it's anything but. Holding your breath can negatively impact your body in a number of ways. It reduces the oxygen supply to your brain, which can lead to feeling lightheaded or dizzy. It can also increase your heart rate and blood pressure, adding unnecessary strain on your heart. Now, the tricky part is, we often don't even realize we're doing it. So, how can we become aware of this habit and put a stop to it? Well, I've got a few techniques for y'all. First, try to make a conscious effort to pay attention to your breathing throughout the day. Notice the rhythm of your breath, how it feels as it moves in and out. If you catch yourself holding your breath, gently remind yourself to breathe. Another technique is to practice deep diaphragmatic breathing. This type of breathing encourages full oxygen exchange, which can slow your heartbeat and lower or stabilize blood pressure. It's simple. Breathe in slowly through your nose, allowing your chest and lower belly to rise as you fill your lungs. Then exhale slowly, releasing that breath just as gradually. Lastly, consider incorporating mindfulness or meditation into your routine. These practices can help you become more aware of your body and its responses, including your breathing. Remember, breathing is a natural and vital process. It's not something we should be controlling or restricting. It's the rhythm of life, the silent song that our bodies sing from the moment we're born. So, don't hold back. Let that breath flow. The fourth reason you might be breathing wrong is, your posture is poor. Now this might sound surprising to some, but let's think about it. When your posture is poor, your body isn't aligned properly. This misalignment can restrict your diaphragm and lungs, leading to shallow and inefficient breathing. Imagine your body as a musical wind instrument. If it's bent or twisted, the airflow is disrupted, and the sound it produces isn't as rich or as full. Similarly, when your body is hunched or slouched, your breathing is compromised. You're not getting the full range of motion needed for optimal breathing. Now let's talk about the relationship between posture and breathing. The diaphragm, a dome-shaped muscle located just below your lungs, plays a crucial role in breathing. When you inhale, your diaphragm contracts and moves downward, creating space for your lungs to expand. But when your posture is poor, your diaphragm can't move as freely. It becomes like a musician trying to play a beautiful symphony on a damaged instrument. So how can you improve your posture for better breathing? First, be mindful of your body. Whether you're sitting, standing, or moving, try to keep your back straight and shoulders pulled back. Imagine a string pulling you up from the top of your head, stretching you tall. Next, engage your core muscles. These are the muscles around your trunk and pelvis. When these muscles are strong and engaged, they help support a good posture. You can strengthen your core with exercises like planks, bridges, and yoga poses. Also, don't forget about the importance of regular movement. Sitting for long periods can lead to a slumped posture, so make sure to take regular breaks to stand up and move around. Even a quick walk or a few stretching exercises can do wonders for your posture and breathing. And finally, consider seeking professional help if needed. Physiotherapists and chiropractors are skilled in helping people improve their posture, so remember, stand tall, breathe deep. Good posture is not just about looking confident and poised, it's about creating the ideal structure for your body to breathe efficiently and effectively. Last but not least in our five reasons you are breathing the wrong way, you're not exercising enough. Now, you might be wondering, what does exercise have to do with the way I breathe? Well, let me tell you, it has everything to do with it. Exercise, in its many forms, is a fantastic way to improve your respiratory health and by extension, your breathing. Why so? When you exercise, your lungs work harder to supply your muscles with the oxygen they need. This process strengthens your lungs and increases their capacity. Over time, this can lead to more efficient, deeper breathing even when you're at rest. What's more, exercise also helps to improve your cardiovascular health. A strong heart can pump blood more efficiently, carrying oxygen to where it's needed most. This means less huffing and puffing after climbing a flight of stairs or chasing after your dog. So what type of exercises should you be doing? Well, aerobic exercises, also known as cardio, are particularly beneficial for improving your breathing. 
These include activities such as jogging, swimming, cycling, or even brisk walking. These activities get your heart rate up and your lungs working, promoting better oxygen exchange. But that's not all. Strength training exercises such as weightlifting can also help. While it may not seem obvious at first, these exercises strengthen your diaphragm, the muscle that aids in breathing. A stronger diaphragm means more efficient breathing. And let's not forget about yoga. Yoga and similar practices that incorporate mindful breathing techniques can help you learn to breathe more deeply and efficiently. Plus, they can be a great way to reduce stress, which can often lead to shallow, rapid breathing. So there you have it. Exercise is a key component in improving your breathing. Whether you're a fitness enthusiast or a beginner, adding these types of exercises to your routine can significantly improve the way you breathe. Remember, good breathing isn't just about the mechanics. It's also about the overall health of your body. Get moving, get breathing. All right, we've covered our oh, five reasons you are breathing the wrong way. Let's wrap it up. We began with the discussion about shallow breathing. We learned that shallow breathing doesn't provide our bodies with the oxygen it needs to function optimally. To overcome this, we must focus on taking deep, slow breaths, filling our lungs to their full capacity, and then exhaling slowly. This practice helps in improving our oxygen levels, boosting our energy, and reducing stress. We then moved on to the topic of mouth breathing. Breathing through the mouth instead of the nose can lead to dry mouth, bad breath, and even disrupt our sleep. The solution is simple. Practice nasal breathing. This will not only improve our lung capacity, but also filter the air we breathe in and increase our overall well-being. Next up was the issue of holding our breath, especially during stressful situations. This habit disrupts the balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide in our bodies. The answer lies in conscious breathing. By being mindful of our breath, we can avoid holding it unconsciously and maintain a good balance of gases in our bodies. Our fourth point revolved around poor posture. Slouching or hunching over compresses our lungs, limiting their capacity. To rectify this, we need to maintain good posture. Standing and sitting upright allows our lungs to expand fully, enabling us to breathe more efficiently. Lastly, we discussed the lack of exercise. Regular physical activity helps to strengthen our respiratory muscles and improve our breathing. So whether it's a brisk walk, a jog, or an intense workout session, make sure to include some form of exercise in your daily routine. In essence, correct breathing is crucial for our overall health. It's the key to a healthier and more energetic life. So let's start paying attention to the way we breathe. Let's focus on deep nasal breathing, maintain good posture, avoid holding our breath, and get moving. Remember, the key to a healthier life could be as simple as breathing right. Until next time, breathe easy, folks. Hey there, we hope you found our video on five reasons you are breathing the wrong way helpful. We are committed to bringing you informative and actionable health-related content, just like this one. If you found this video valuable and want to continue improving your health and wellness, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. When you subscribe to our channel, you'll get regular updates and tips directly from our health experts. This isn't just about breathing right, we cover a wide array of topics. From diet and nutrition, exercise and fitness, mental health and stress management, to sleep and rest, we've got you covered. We believe that small, consistent changes can lead to big improvements in our overall well-being. And we're here to guide you every step of the way. So, why wait? Hit that subscribe button and join us on this journey to better health. Up next, we have a fantastic video lined up where we'll be discussing 10 superfoods for boosting immunity. You wouldn't want to miss that, would you? Until next time, breathe easy, folks.